Right, good morning, everybody. I think we are live. This is my first solo YouTube live broadcast. So please bear with me with the technology because I've not used the software before. So things are going to inevitably go uh, slightly awry and I'm going to have to fix them. So um, bear with me uh, for that thing. Now, the thing is, I don't actually know I'm live apart from this software is telling me I'm live. So if anyone is watching, then please let me know that you're actually seeing me. Oh, I think I think I am live because I can see. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Right, yeah, that's good. I am live. That's good. Right, we're laughing. So the point of this video is I wanted to do some live WordPress plugin development. Scary, scary, I know. Um, and let you all watch how I'm going to build a plugin. Now, this is based on the premise of a few weeks ago. I built a, a simple code snippet to allow you to create a 404 template in WordPress that was block based editable. So you could use a block based editor um, in WordPress, the Gutenberg editor, to be able to add content to that page. Because usually it's just a template in WordPress and the user can't actually change the content of it. So I did that and I thought what we do is in this um, uh, little video is we turn that into an actual plugin that you can use on your WordPress website uh, and uh, spice it up a bit, give it some settings, etc., just to make it better. And also something that uh, a lot of people told me about was the caching issue in that the WordPress 404 page is actually used by lots of things other than like WordPress. So every time someone hits something on your server that is a, a non-existent URL, that page loads and therefore it's important that it's uh, efficient and fast. So I'm going to introduce some caching to it and show you how to do some basic caching in WordPress. That's the plan, anyway. So, here we go, um, we're gonna give this a go, and the first task for me is to work out how to get me off the screen and my computer on the screen, so you'll have to bear with me a second on how to do that. I think I just pressed that button. Yay, I think that's right, that was good. Um, I'm gonna slide the software over to this window, and then we can see everything. So, I'm gonna talk you through all this, creating a Git repo, pulling that down locally, setting up a site locally, uh, in fact, I've got the site set up locally, but you'll see it working locally. Building the plugin, pushing it up to GitHub. Um, I'm going to try and just do all of it. I'll see how, how it goes anyway. So, first things first, create a new repository. So this is going to be HD block based, oops, 404 page or 404. And we're going to give it a name. So a small, this is a description, sorry. Small plugin to allow WordPress users to edit the content of the 404 page using the block editor. It is a public repo and I'm going to give it a readme file and I'm going to click create repository. So GitHub is going to get me a new repo. There we go. And everything's in place. And that, what I'm going to do is grab the clone URL and in tower i've already gone on to create uh, sorry clone a remote repository the remote url is there use my account and then i need to say where i'm going to put that in my machine locally so i've got <clears throat> in my uh, folder here i've got a site called wp test which i've already set up it exists at wp test dot test and um I'm going to go and put this repo into the plugins folder. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, you'll see that's a plugin I did the other day on, on the video. Um, and then I click open. So it looks to stick it in there and clone. Not a great deal should happen because um, there's nothing in it <laughs> except a readme file. Uh, so that's worked. There we go. And we've, oh, we've got main as the new branch. Oh, that's because GitHub now uses main, not master. I don't know if you saw that news, but there you go. So there we've got that. Now, if I go into my Sublime, which is my code editor, actually, it's not open. So let's go and just grab that project and stick it into Sublime, which is on the other screen. There we go. Um, you should be able to see my code. And there we go. There's the there's a readme file that is pulled down from GitHub. Uh, and we're ready to go. So first task then. Oh, by the way, I don't know if there's anyone watching, but if you are and you've got any questions, uh, then stick them in the comments and let me know uh, Let me know what you're asking, and I'll, I'll do my best to, to get back to you. Um, but before I do that, I'll have to just switch over to the correct YouTube account. Otherwise, I'll be replying as something else. One second. Um, ba -ba -da. 
as I said, not done this before, so we're going to get some issues, but there we go. Excellent. Well, there. Right, so um, first thing to do is to create my plugin header um, or base file that, that sort of loads the plugin. And to do that, you need the plugin header at the top. So I'm going to pinch the one that I used the other day. I'll just copy this and then I'll explain what it actually does. So this bit at the top here just tells WordPress that this is a plugin, essentially. And you'll see this information is what it loads into the plugin screen. So I'm just going to change the name of the, this in here to HD Block Based 404. And in here, I'm going to add the same uh, description that we put into GitHub. Excellent. It's version one, high rise digital, over oh, lovely, and then HD block based 404. So um, this basically says if WordPress hasn't been loaded, then just don't let anyone do anything. Exit, forget, stop loading, gone. Okay. Um, so, thanks, Elliot. Thanks for joining us. Um, oh, sorry, just seen a, a, a comment there from Elliot. Uh, so, that's basically, yeah, stop loading if WordPress uh, isn't loaded at this point. So, if the absolute path of WordPress isn't defined, then do nothing. Then I'm going to define a couple of constants which uh, reference this plugin. So, if you're loading things like scripts and styles and assets, these are quite useful for doing that sort of thing. Uh, they're not essential, but I quite like them. So at this point, I'm going to prefix these with a nice um, something. So we're going to go block-based. Uh, can you use numbers in a constant? Oh, I don't know. Um, let's go block-based 404. We'll do that. We'll, we'll call that. I don't know whether that's going to work. We'll see. Um, I don't know. Anyone can tell me whether you can use constants, uh, numbers in a constant. Anyway, 404. Um, well, it's actually, no, not a zero, but never mind. Um, we'll use that as our prefix. So you should always prefix your functions and things so that you're not going to clash with any others. And we've just created our prefix there. So there is my constants defined. If I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to use any styles and scripts, but it's good practice. So let's see if it, let's see if we need them later on. Um, and then what I like to do, and I'm actually going to have to pinch this from somewhere else because I don't think I've got it on this um, this particular project. Where have I used this? Is yeah, here we go. This is one. Um, I like to use a loader file, and I'm not sure people are going to tell me I'm doing it wrong, but there we go. So in there, we basically say, require my loader file, and then the loader file goes and loads all of the code that you need. Now, obviously, I could just build this plugin in one file. I could just stick it all in one file, but it would get a little bit confusing. So I like to split it up into different files and folders, just so it's easy to work with. So, Blockbase 404. I'm going to, first of all, create a new folder called Ink. Many people call it includes, but I like to shorten it to ink. And it's just going to include um, some of the files that I want to work with. Then, before we actually start putting some files and stuff in there, I am going to create my loader file. But before we do that, I need to save this file, don't I? So let's do that first. And call it the same as the folder that you've got. So oh, we're in the wrong project. We need to be in WP Test, Content, Plugins, Block base 404, and then we're going to call it the same name. So HD block based 404. Save. Excellent. Then we're going to create a new file. And we're going to call it loader.php in the ink folder and save. Just stick a little comment at the top. This file simply loads. Nice and simple. So what we do then is we say um, glob means basically get me all of the files from the current directory that are PHP files. And then it says if, um, if and the current directory being in, in, in the includes folder, which I've just saved this file in, um, it basically says if that's not empty, so if we've got lots of files in that, that, fo that folder, then loop through them for each of those files we want to actually exclude this file that we're in. So if the string, or the name of the file includes loader.php, which is the name of this file, then do nothing, continue. If it doesn't, then we're going to require that file into our plugin, so it's going to load in. Um, this just means that you don't have to keep saying, right, require once this file, require once this file, require once this file. You can just put files into the includes folder, and they'll just get loaded in automatically. So that's uh, that one. 
hopefully that was easy to understand. So, first thing we're going to try and do in our plugin is we're going to create some settings. So we're going to create a new file into the ink folder. Uh, this file loads the necessary settings and renders settings in the WP admin. So the idea here is we're going to give the user a, a setting where they can choose which page they want to use for their 404 page. So they're going to create a, a physical page in WordPress uh, and then they're going to use that as a 404. Uh, and we're going to we're going to grab that when once they've selected it. Um, before we move on, though, let's get into our actual site. And that's interesting. Is map running? No, map's not running. That's why. Let's uh, make sure we've got our local development set up. The joys of live coding and what you forget to do. Is MAMP going to run for me? Please? There we go. Uh, start the servers. This is where they break. Watch this. And they go, no, I'm not working today. Aha, of course I can. I can certainly zoom in, Elliot, of course. Let me let's fix that problem for you. I think that's a very good point. Have the servers loaded? Yes, they have. Is that running? Looks like it might be, yep. Yeah. Let's log in. Don't want to save the password because it's local. Let's just flip back to Sublime. Uh, and it can't read the code, which you probably can't because it's very small. Let me just... There we go, seven times bigger. Hopefully that's a little better for you, we'll see. Um, there we go, so we're logged in. If we go to plugins, this is the test site that I've stuck the plugin in. Then there is our block base 404 and we're gonna activate that uh, to make it run. Oh, no errors, that's a good sign. I'm just gonna deactivate that social widgets one. Um, but I'm gonna keep query monitor active. So if you are a developer and you uh, develop stuff, I highly recommend that you use Query Monitor because it is going to tell you what you're doing wrong. It's going to spit out a lot of stuff for you up here at the top, tell you what's going on. Uh, really super, super useful. Any errors that you've got, it's going to uh, tell you about those as well. So highly recommend you actually adding that there. So Blockbase 404 is running with no errors. Excellent. We're laughing. So now for the settings. Um, you might see me looking over to the right hand side. That's because I've got something set up over here with some coding, which saves them to copy uh, to write it all out. So uh, there's going to be a little bit of cheating and Fred going involved. Uh, settings. Let's grab uh, one little piece at a time. So first thing to do is I'm going to create a function which registers a new setting in WordPress. So let's call it HD block based four or four underscore uh, register the 404 page setting and then we're going to hook that into WordPress in the init uh, sorry the admin init action because we're just going to run this in the admin and we're going to pass our function in there we go and then the actual settings pretty straightforward register setting now this is the page that we want to put it onto in WordPress so this would put it on the media page um, so if I go to settings, I presume that the general one is options general, or is it, let's have a look, writing. Options writing is probably going to be general then, isn't it? Because I think I want to put in the general one. So let's, well, we can certainly try it, can't we? General, and then this is the actual name of our setting. So HD block based 404, and this will be the uh, 404 page. So that's going to be the name of our setting. So save that. We need a comment. Hopefully that helps people understand.
Now you won't actually see anything happening with that function. So what we're then going to do is we're going to add a field for that setting. I'm just going to grab this from over here. Um, HD based 404. <clears throat> this is the 404 page setting. Again, we're going to hook that into admin in it, and then this is what this kind of does. So this is an ID for that particular thing, like a CSS ID that it uses. So we'll do HD for uh, block base for for uh, page ID. Oops, we've got a random equals sign. So here is the um, the um, label for what you want to call that. So choose, let's call it 404 page. This is our text domain, which is HD block base 404. Uh, this is a callback function. So this is the function that we're going to write in a second that is going to be used to render that field on the actual screen. Okay. So we'll call it pretty much the same as that one, except it's going to be our prefix. Uh, base 404. <clears throat> and it is the page. ID setting output. Then what we'll do is we'll just create that down here. I'm just going to do that, and then you can never see the code right at the bottom. Hopefully, um, so that's that bit. We don't want it on there. We want it on general. Uh, can't remember what default does. Let's have a quick look. Section. Section optional the slug name of the section of the settings page in which to show the box. Interesting. Let's just leave that our default, and then we're going to give it a label for. So <clears throat> this is the should put the idea of ID of the input in here um, that we're going to use. So I am guessing that can be the same as the ID here. Let's try that, and then we're going to actually put the output on here. Now I think for speed what we're going to do here is we're going to just put a box where they can type the idea of a page in. If I get time at the end we can improve that by giving a drop down to show the different pages. So let's ID. I'm just looking here. Bear with me a second. So the name of our input needs to be the name of our setting. As you can see, I've grabbed this from another plugin. Uh, the ID can be the same. It's a text box. Now that's the setting name, which is obviously going to be the same ID here. I'll, just, I'll explain this in a second. Bear with me a second. Just grab it all in. Let's space it out a bit so you can see it. And uh, da, 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 da. let's have a look at that. So, right. So, what we've got here is we've got an input that's a text input. Probably should be a number input if we're going to put an ID in it. Um, the name of the input is the name of our, our registered setting. We've got the ID of the input, which is the same. And notice we're escaping these uh, through escape attribute because they're all inside a HTML elements attribute. Um, we've got a class. This is just based on the WordPress admin class that makes the box look nice. And the value is we're going to grab the actual saved option from the database, which will be uh, where we've saved it. Obviously, one at the moment because we haven't saved it, but that's what we'll display in the box. So, so the user's already put something in there, they're going to see that actual. And then we're going to give a description. So this is enter page ID of the page you wish to use for your editable 404 template. Something like that. And then we'll stick in the text domain and save. So, does that do anything? It does. Yay! There we go. We've got a setting at the bottom. It's a number, which is good. Nice. Right. So, let's go and create a page. Um, duh, 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 duh. There's query monitor telling that map's pretty slow. And let's create a page. So just running 2020, that's why it looks like this. So my 404 page <clears throat> um, and 
should we add some content to it? Yeah, let's add some content to it. Latest posts. And then let's do, this is the 404 page. Right, so there we go. We've got a page called 404. Let's publish that page. What ID is it? It is ID number 33. Let's copy that. Go into settings and we will stick this in here and hopefully it'll save. So we're telling our plugin now that we want to use page 33, the ID of 33, for the page that's going to render the 404. <clears throat> so we've saved that. Everything's rosy, which is good. Okay, so we've got our setting there now. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to be able to say to WordPress, when a 404 page is triggered, we want to use a custom template, which we're going to put in our plugin. So let's try and do that now. Um, I'm going to have to borrow some code from something else for this. So let me just uh, try and do this. Let's do some professional Googling. Um, template. I remember there's a post by Mark Jacob about this. Template include. Let's have a look. It's either template include or templates. I can't remember what the other one was. Uh, there's a post I'm looking for. There we go. So don't use template do direct to load an alternative. So I want to load an alternative template file, which is correct. So I want to use template include. So I want to do this. And I want to basically say, if is 404, do this. Otherwise, just return the original. Perfect. Copy. Now, I would say that in Tower, I would be committing as I'm going here. Um, but obviously, I am trying to not let, make this last for hours and hours. So I'm going to cheat a bit there. Um, right, so let's come out of the settings page. And we'll do that in the root file here. So... I'm going to be really picky. I like to put my add filter or action at the bottom. Let's tidy this up a little bit. Make it look a bit neater. Does anyone else's mouse do that where you just doesn't want to click? Let's just do that a bit as well. So my callback is not a great name, so let's do HD block based 404. Uh, template include. So it gets past the original templates, and we're going to test if that works. There is, I'm sure there is an is 404, isn't there? Let me just, yeah, definition. Query. Determines whether the query has resulted in a 404. Perfect. That's exactly what I want to do. Right, so if the current request is a 404, then we're going to return... Aha, and this is where we need our constants because we're going to say, well, they're here, right in front of me. Um, we're going to say, we're going to grab a file in um, I don't know what to call it. Let's call it hmm, can't call it 404. Well, I can. 404. Let's call it 404 error. Um now, so what I'm going to do in here, I'm actually going to just make this a little bit extensible as well, just to give you a flavor of that as well. So, uh, just grabbing up some more code, never goes on the right monitor. Uh, where are we? API, bear with me a second. They come in there, that's it. So, a little bit of extensible coding coming up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically say, look, if um, if the current theme has a 404 error.php file in it, then we're going to use it. So we're going to say 404 error. And if it doesn't, we're going to use the one from here. Like that. 
go with that. Uh, and if none of that's true, we're just going to use the original template. Let's just make this a bit neat and tidier. Right, so um, comments. If the current request is a 404, check whether the active theme has a template. Uh, load the template from the theme. Uh, file is not, so we don't have a file, so we're going to load the template from the plugin. Um, this is not a 404 request. Return the original file. Do we need to exit at all in there, I wonder? Uh, no, we just returned the path. That's good. That's weird because it's a filter. Oh no, we are returning. Sorry, ignore. Me. That's good. Okay, so comment at the top. The block uh, uses a different four or four template. Should uh, 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 for uh, which is block editable. So this is a string, and it's the path of the original. Requested template. This is a string the modified requested template. Lovely. So, um, blah, 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 template include, blah, 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 blah. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a template. In fact, we should put that in a folder, really, shouldn't we? Let's call it templates. So inside my folder for my plugin, we're going to create a new file called templates. Sorry, a new folder called templates. And then we're going to create a new file and we're just going to say it's a PHP file. And for a start, we're just going to echo. I don't know why, but I always use Bob as my random string to echo. So there we go. And it's going to be 404 error.php. And it's going to be saved in there. This is probably going to tank now and everyone's going to be screaming at me why you did it wrong, but there we go. Um, so, if I try this, so here's my website, does it work? Yay! There we go. So we've gone, <coughs> excuse me, to a 404 and we've loaded our new file, which is awesome. So, now the reason why I've made it extensible is because I can't... Um, I don't know what the markup of the theme is going to be. Yeah, so I don't, I, I can't tell you what the markup of someone's theme is going to be, and therefore I can't. Um, I, I need to make it editable so that the user can change the markup to to match their theme. Because obviously, uh, my current four or four looks nothing like my theme, and obviously that that means you could do something completely different with it. Um, but you probably want to keep it matching with your theme. It's up to you. Anyway, there you go. So for the purposes of this one, I'm just going to use the 2020 markup, um, uh, which is interesting. And let's grab the actual 2020 markup, not that one, which has already been modified. Some prep would have been good before your video there, Mark. Um, when you want 2020, but you can't find it, where is it? 2020, 404, here it is. Okay, so this is the actual content of the 2020 thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some random letters in there just to make sure that that actually loads. Beautiful. So it's still using the same one. Excellent. Okay. So now what we're going to do in here, we're going to um, get our content. Now I'm just thinking about it might be a better way to do this. We could use an action hook. Hmm. Let's do it the easy way, and we can improve it later. Um, so, uh, what you want to do is you want to. Well, first of all, what you want to do is you want to get the. Uh, so remember, this is I'm in the plugin now. This is my file in the plugin that gets loaded. We're just using 
the the sort of markup of the twenty twenty four or four as an example. You might want to mark this up as as you as you would obviously. Um, out of interest, what does it look like if I get rid of that markup and just sort of put some text in there? Let's have a look. Hmm. Not terrible. I wonder which bit. I bet it's that bit I need, isn't it? Let's just ditch that bit then and do that. Refresh. That's not bad. Oh, query mon is just telling me I've got a slow query. But it's a core thing. Probably just MAMP being slow. Um, okay, so that's better. So up at the top here, what we're going to do is we need to get the page that the user has selected as a 404. So get the 404 block based page selected in the settings screen. So here we can say uh, error page ID. In fact, no, let's call it, let's give it a better name than that. HD block base 404 page ID equals get option because it's saved in the options table. And if we just open our settings file again, that's the name of the option. That's where we registered the setting. So get me that. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to dump that out to the screen just to check that it is actually what we think it is. And it should always be a number. So let's make it a number by absent. That should dump out 33 because that was the idea of our page. Beautiful there is. Excellent. Okay. Right, so as something comes through my letterbox, um, where are we looking at? Where are we looking at? Get back with the game, Mark. Right, so we've got our page. So if we have, if we have a, I might be able to do this further down the page actually. Um, I will. I'm going to move this. Oops. In here. There. There we go. Um, so if we have a 404 page selected, if it's not empty, uh, else so if we've got if, if the user has selected a page in the settings screen, then we're going to actually render those blocks here. And if they haven't, we're just going to output a sort of message here. So let's just use uh, the one from the default theme. So I'm just going to copy that. I've got it over here on the other screen. There we go. So that's straight from the uh, stuff in the default theme. So to save that, now that shouldn't display because I have selected a page. Beautiful. Okay. So if I, just to confirm that's going to work, if I say that if, if it is empty, so this will now be not empty, that should now display just to make sure my logic is working. Beautiful. Right. Undo that. Excellent. So, Next thing, right, so now we've got a page selected. What we need to do is we need to do our getting of the content of that page. So let's have a look at that now. Let's grab that from up there. So we've got that. So we need to, first of all, get the content of that particular page that's been selected here. Okay. So... Um, let's, we need to get the page object first, don't we? So let's grab the page object. Presumably we can use get post maybe. Um, uh, let's go for that. Object equals 
get post. There might be a get page actually. Is there, there is a get page. Retrieve page data given a page ID or a page object. Use get post instead of get page. Is that telling me that I shouldn't use that? Okay, well, let's get post and see what happens. So we're going to do that's our object ID. We're going to pass it through absent again. Oops. Oh, if I could type, it would be dangerous. There we go. Let's dump that out. Have I got my little debugging function on? Yes, I have. Good. Let's just check that's going to return our page object by dumping that to the screen. Refresh. Yay, there we go. So we've got, that's our object. Beautiful. Where is the content of that object? There is the content. This is a 404 page. Okay. Hmm, why is the block not showing there? So we put a latest post block in, didn't we? It does. It's just that obviously it is. Got you. It's just a comment. Of course it is, Mark. Of course it is. Get with it. Come on. Right. Okay. Um, so that's good. We have content. So um, what we're then going to do is we're going to grab the blocks from that particular uh Page. No, we're not, because we're going to cache it, aren't we, first? So we need to check whether we have a cached version of the content. So to do that, let me uh, let me grab this one one second. Let me just remind myself here. So to do that, first of all, we're going to set, we're going to, we're going to use the uh, transients, WordPress transients. If you've not used WordPress transients, they're like, uh, options that that have a time-based uh, setting so that they disappear after a certain amount of time and if we use the transients API it also means that if you've got a persistent object cache on your site which if you're with one of the major WordPress hosting providers that then you probably have then it's going to use that instead which has all the benefits um, because the transients functions will default back to that if a persistent object cache is available. So let's do that first. So the first thing we're going to do is set a transient key. So this is like the key in the database that she used to store this data. Um, so let's just give that a variable name of transient key. And then we're going to say, get me the contents of the transient. Uh, sorry, that's the next. The let's do a key. So in the database, this is the key that we're going to store this data against. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get any transient data. So basically, is this stuff already cached and we don't need to get it again? So this will be our not found page content. So this is the content that we're going to actually render. And we're going to get the content of this from the database. So get transient, and it's going to be the transient key. Do I need to do that there, or can I just do that there? Do I need to use transient key anywhere else? Yes, I do. So let's leave it as a, leave it as a variable. There we go. So not found content. Get me the transient. Then we're going to say, look, have we got any cached content? So if we don't have content cached in the transient, so that's if false, because get transient returns false, I presume. Let me just check. Get transient. Uh, I'm going to trust that it does. Because I've done this before. Trust me. It returns false. If false is equal to no found content. So basically, we've got nothing in the database that is a cached version of this. So what we need to do is we need to render the content and then cache it. So let's do that now then. So let's create a variable called blocks. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pass the blocks that are in the content of our page, which obviously is here. <clears throat> Remember, we got the page object or the post object. 
So we're saying pass me the block. So blocks now contains the past versions. That's kind of the output versions of the blocks on the page. We're then going to uh, loop through each block. And we're then going to render each block into our content um, here. So we're going to say, do we need to make sure? Yeah, let's let's just create a variable to stick our content in. And then for this bit, we're going to render the blocks. So for each of those blocks, we're going to render its content into an outputable format. So no found content now contains the output that we're going to like spit out on the page. And then before we actually do that, we need to um, cache it. So let's do this. So set the transient. So we're going to set a new transient because remember, we don't have any content of it. Um, we're going to use the tra same transient key. We're going to put the content into the option in the database and we're going to set a time for that. Now you could set, it depends what how often you think you're going to change this page. You could set that to like 12 hours. You could set that to like seven days, I suppose. But if you know you're going to change this relatively often, then you want to set it to something that is reasonable for the time frame that you think you're going to need. Now for this instance, I'm just going to set it to a minute because I want to test it. And obviously I'd need to wait a minute to be able to test it. Otherwise, I'd be waiting seven days to be able to test it. So I'm just going to set it to a minute in seconds. Now, if you haven't used these, um, WordPress has a number of um, time constants, which oops, are very interesting and very useful. So let me just find those for you, and you can see them. They're all on the uh, Codex or the developer um, blog. So here, here it is. WordPress already has minute in seconds, hour in seconds, day in seconds, week in seconds, because the transient functions they want you to set the number of the time in seconds, not in like minutes or whatever it is. So those are very useful. And then you can use like maths to do different things, times by three, times by two, times by 10, whatever it might be, to make even more settings. Um, so let's go back to our, our page. So we've set the transient. So let's just run through this again. We've created a key to save the stuff in the database. We've checked whether it's already been cached. If it's not been cached, we're gonna grab the content of our block-based page that we know we've set to use. We're going to render each block into a variable. We're going to set the content of that variable as the transient again. So we're going to cache it. And then what we need to do down here now is actually output the stuff. Um, so to do that, we're just going to echo out all this stuff out like this. Echo the not found content. Now, I might, you might, might want to run that through WP Cases Post. Let's just see if it works first. Uh, so. Da, 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 da. Right, excellent. So remember, we had a latest post uh, block and we had a paragraph. So refresh our 404. Excellent. There's our paragraph. There's our latest post uh, uh, thing. Okay. So if I create a new post quickly, as in less than a minute, quickly. <laughs> then it should, that should say test, but I need to do it quickly. So I've created a new post and that should now show in our latest post block, but it shouldn't because we should be cached. Correct, okay, so I've created a new post which should show in that latest post list, but it's not showing because I've cached the result. So if I wait a minute, then that should, um, it should update. So has it been a minute for refresh? No, well, you get the idea anyway. So hopefully in a minute that should be, that should uh, update the cache because when I refresh, it'll check the cache, the cache won't be there. We'll render the page again with the new content in, etc. Fingers crossed, he says, when he refreshes the page. There we go, yay, it worked. So we've got our new one in there. So it cached it for a minute and then it waited, uh, when I refreshed it after a minute, it went and grabbed the new content. So quickly I could, do the same here if I just go into the pages into our 404 page <clears throat> and da, 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 come on just 
as it were at the end of the date. And again, it's probably not going to grab that until a minute's up. There we go. So it's going to wait a minute again. Something's really slow. Um, excellent. So that's working. Yay. Now, what you probably want to do as well is actually use the title of this page, don't you? So we actually probably want to say, um, let's output the title first. Output, uh, maybe we just, actually, let's just put that into our cache. So if we, hmm, I'm just thinking how to do the title of the post. Uh, do we want to put that into the cache? Why not? Why would we not want to put that into the cache, Mark? Let's do that. Add the post <coughs> title to the cache. So we've got not found con content. Add to. So the dot equals means add to the array, not like overwrite it. And then let's do a h1 class equals let's just borrow that class the entry title Oop, h1 <clears throat> and add to I might do this in a different order in a second wait a minute and then uh, this will be Basically this. Let's escape the title. Post title. So adding and that's going to add it to the end. So let's just put it up there. That should add it to the start. Does that work? Refresh. That should also now include our extra content. And it does. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay, so there we go. Um, lovely. That works. I like it. Okay, so we're looking good. We're looking like we've got a plugin that's working, um, which is excellent. So we've got a 404 page, which we can uh, use here. So we can add, add blocks to this. Let's add uh, an image, see if that works. Uh, image. Um, media library. Do I have any images in this setting site? A lovely red image that we can use. So let's add that. Update. That might not update straight away because we've got the cache on, which is good. Refresh. It doesn't. That's good. That means the cache is working. I'm liking it. And then we've got in our settings page under general, we've got the ID of the page we want to use which is good. Now what you could do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap this up because I don't wanna go on and on forever, but what you could do is you could make that drop down to actually choose the pages. That would be relatively easy to do as well because there is a function in WordPress, I'm sure that is a WP drop down page. Um, and even if that wasn't, you could write something really, really quickly to do that, um, which is good. Then what I would also wanna do to improve this is I want to write a function that gets that page ID. Um, rather than just using get option, because then we can, if we want to change that in the future, we can do. Um, but you get the idea. You get the idea of what sort of how you could make it better um, and thinking about that. One thing I do want to test is will the, will the template override work for the theme? So let's just go and uh, 404 error in theme. 404. So I'm going to just put off a template file in the active theme, which according to our code should work. It should get up. It should overwrite and use that instead. Uh, I might need to just. Oh no! Well, that will that will work, won't it? I think it will. Let's try. Page not found. Beautiful. So that just overrides. So if I'm if I want to um, make this better, I want to make the markup different. Stick that in my theme. Boom! That works instead which is great. So, last thing, let's commit this to GitHub. So, initial commit from local, uh, 
everything's going up. Stage O, commit, push. Da, da, da. It's over here. So if we go back there and refresh that, there you go. You've got a plugin. You can go and play with that if you like. Um, yeah, I think we're good. That is that is plugin development really quickly. Um, building a 404. Let me just grab my screen back and you can see me instead. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. If you stuck with me, um, we have a plugin. It allows you to edit your 404 page using blocks. It caches the results, so it's pretty performant. Um, and it is a little bit extensible because it allows you to override the template that's used for that and drop it in your theme uh, instead. So I'm sure there's lots of things that I've done wrong there and lots of things that could be improved on, but hopefully you get the idea of what can be achieved and I hope you enjoyed a bit of live coding from me. Um, if you want to, to see more of this, then please do subscribe to this channel. Um, I might do a little bit more of this, we'll see. Uh, hit the like button if you like the video and leave us a comment. It's, Tell me how I did, how bad I did. Uh, that would be really good. So, yeah, thanks again, and we'll see you all soon.